Hey everybody and welcome back. Ready for another deep dive? Definitely. Awesome. Well, today we're tackling Facebook ad set budget optimization. ABO. That's right, ABO. And we're zeroing in on the common mistakes even seasoned marketers make. Because let's be real. Yeah. You want to make sure every dollar you spend on ads is actually bringing you results. Absolutely. Right? Like, yeah. So we dug into a ton of articles and expert opinions. And it was fascinating. Like, did you know that some folks believe ABO is a magic bullet? Like you just set it and forget it and the money just rolls in. Yeah, it's a very common misconception. You know, people think Facebook's algorithm can do it all for them. Right, exactly. But the reality is it's a tool. It's a tool. It's not a magician. Exactly. And even with the best tools, you got to know how to use them right. Absolutely. So let's get to it. Mistake number one, not keeping a close eye on your campaigns. Why is regular monitoring so important here? You know, besides the obvious, you want to know what's working and what's not thing. Well, think of it this way. With ABO, you're essentially giving Facebook a budget and saying, OK, distribute this across my ad sets as you see fit. But the algorithm needs feedback to learn and optimize. If you're not checking in regularly, at least every couple of days to see how your ad sets are performing, you're missing out on crucial opportunities to adjust and improve. So it's kind of like, you know, giving someone directions, but not actually checking if they're going the right way. Exactly. You wouldn't just give someone directions and then blindly assume they got to the destination right. You'd probably check in, make sure they're on the right track and offer course correction if needed. Same goes for ABO. I like that. So it's all about staying in the driver's seat. Speaking of control, mistake number two is all about budgets specifically. Inflexible budgets. Why is this such a problem? Well, one of the main benefits of ABO is its ability to dynamically allocate your budget to the ad sets that are performing the best. Right. So the ones that are actually getting results. Exactly. But if you have a rigid budget set for each ad set, you're essentially limiting that flexibility. Let's say you've got one ad set that's absolutely crushing it, bringing in tons of leads or sales, whatever your goal is. It's a winner. It's a winner. And then you have another ad set that's just kind of, eh sputtering along. Not so much. Yeah. With a fixed budget, you might be forced to keep spending the same amount on both, even though one is clearly outperforming the other, you're missing out on maximizing the potential of that rock star ad set. Makes sense. It's like, you know, pouring more water into a leaky bucket instead of filling up the one that's actually holding water. Exactly. So we've got to be flexible with our budgets. Yeah. Now, mistake number three is one that comes up again and again in digital marketing. Poor audience segmentation. Yeah. Why is this still such a common pitfall, even for experienced advertisers? Because it's easy to get caught up in the excitement of reaching as many people as possible and forget that relevance is key. You can have the most amazing ad creative, but if you're showing it to the wrong people, it's just going to fall flat. Yeah, it's like trying to sell vegan burgers at a barbecue festival, Exactly. Right? You need to really understand your target audience, their demographics, their interests, their online behavior. Where do they hang out? What are their pain points? What are their aspirations? So it's kind of like, you know, you wouldn't just invite everyone you know to that barbecue festival. You'd invite the people who actually enjoy, you know, barbecue. Exactly. You want to make sure you're putting your message in front of the people who are most likely to resonate with it and take action. Okay, targeted audiences check. Now let's talk about testing. Mistake number four is skipping EB testing. I'll be honest, when I first started with Facebook ads, I was kind of intimidated by A-B testing, but I quickly learned it's essential. It really is. I mean, think about it. There are so many variables in an ad campaign, different headlines, images, ad copy, calls to action. How do you know what's going to resonate best with your audience? Right. You don't. Exactly. You don't, unless you test. A-B testing allows you to systematically compare different variations of your ads and see which ones perform the best. So you can actually see what's working, not just guess. Exactly. It takes the guesswork out of it. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a one-time thing. You should be constantly testing and refining your ads to improve their performance over time. It's like, you know, a scientist in the lab constantly experimenting to find the perfect formula. Yeah, that's a great analogy. Okay, so we've got targeted audiences. We're A-B testing. Yeah. But sometimes we can be a little too cautious with our budgets. Mistake number five is setting budgets too low. How does this actually backfire? It all comes down to the Facebook algorithm. Remember, it needs data to learn and optimize effectively. If you give it a very small budget to work with, 
it's going to have a limited amount of data to go on. So it's like trying to teach someone a new skill, but only giving them a few minutes to practice. Exactly. You wouldn't expect them to master it, right? Yeah. Same with the algorithm. It needs a decent amount of data to understand who your ideal customers are, what makes them click, what makes them convert. Give it some room to breathe. Exactly. Start with a budget that allows you to reach a significant portion of your target audience. Makes sense. Now, mistake number six is all about those eye-catching elements. Hmm. Poor quality ad creatives. What are some of the biggest blunders you see people making here? Oh, so many. But one of the most common is using blurry or irrelevant images. Right. Your image is the first thing people see. It has to grab their attention. Absolutely. It's the hook. You want something visually appealing, high quality, and relevant to your message and target audience. And then the copy is just as important. It needs to be clear, concise, and compelling. And don't forget, a strong call to action. Yes. Tell people exactly what you want them to do after seeing your ad. Click here, learn more, shop now. Make it easy for them. Exactly. Okay, our campaign's up and running, we're getting data. But now what? Mistake number seven, ignoring key performance indicators or KPIs. Whew, I used to get so lost in all the data. How can we make sense of it all without getting overwhelmed? KPIs are your compass. They tell you if you're on the right track and if you need to make adjustments. Don't get bogged down in every single metric. Focus on the ones that are most relevant to your goals. So like if your goal is to get leads, focus on cost per lead. Exactly. Or if your goal is to drive sales, look at your return on ad spend, your ROAS. So pick your KPIs wisely. Yes. And then, this is crucial, actually use that data to make informed decisions about your campaigns. If your cost per lid is too high, maybe you need to adjust your targeting or your bidding strategy. So KPIs are not just numbers on a screen. They're actually telling you what to do. Exactly. They're your roadmap to success. Okay. We're tracking the right KPIs. But now we get impatient. Mistake number eight, giving up too soon. How long does it actually take for ABO to really work its magic. ABO is not an instant gratification kind of thing. It takes time for the algorithm to learn and optimize. Think of it like a fine wine. It needs time to breathe, to develop its full flavor. Don't pull the plug on your campaigns too early. Give them at least a week or two, sometimes even longer, depending on your goals and budget. So patience is a virtue here. Absolutely. Trust the process and give the algorithm time to work its magic. Okay, last but not least, let's be real about the workload. Mistake number nine underestimating the workload. Why is ABO a bit more hands-on than some other campaign types? Well, unlike campaign budget optimization, or CBO, which is more automated, ABO requires you to manage individual ad sets. You're responsible for monitoring performance, adjusting bids, tweaking targeting. So it's definitely more involved. It is, but it also gives you a lot more control. If you're willing to put in the time and effort, ABO can be incredibly powerful. So it's like, you know, cooking a gourmet meal from scratch versus just popping a frozen dinner in the microwave. Yeah. More work, but potentially much more rewarding. All right, folks, there you have it. Nine common ABO mistakes to avoid. Remember, even small tweaks can make a huge difference in your campaign performance. So what's one action you can take today to optimize your ABO campaigns? Until next time, happy advertising. See you next time.